Okay, so welcome back. So only one asset remained, and that's going to be the rocks. So that's going to be the uh, both this one. So this is going to be the main rock that we're going to sort of look through. So uh, yeah, we're just going to generate something, and then well, this was the one that I ended up using because I liked how there was like a gap in between that sort of had some light rays passing through it, and I just liked the overall shape. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're gonna when you do it yourself, you're gonna probably gonna have a slightly different result. But that, that doesn't matter. I mean, you can uh, just assemble the uh, the scene yourself, and you're gonna have your own unique scene. But before we do that, we're gonna just make a uh, just a one simple rock. So that's this one. So what I had in the uh, final scene is I had I have this main rock, and then I have some smaller rocks scattered across this surface. So just like on the ground here, they're going to be scattered a whole bunch of like smaller rocks. And we're going to do that inside the whole uh, in the in the uh, scene assembly uh, tutorial. So the uh, Patreon uh, exclusive ones in the higher tier. Um, so that's going to be there. Um, so I think I ended up just only scattering one rock, but you can do different. Uh, well, well, many different rocks like we like we're gonna do with the coral. So let's first start building just one little rock part. And of course, it's not gonna look as interesting as the rendered one you saw in the original thing right now because, of course, this is just the model. Uh, but after after this tutorial is 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 done, we're gonna yeah we're gonna look into the uh, in how how we can do lighting and shading inside of Houdini. So we're gonna learn how to render stuff out, how to make light, how to make materials. And especially for the rocks, those materials are going to well, really sell the thing. So we're going to first uh, make these models, like you see them over here. And then we're going to go quickly uh, with, a, with, with a couple of episodes over just explaining how lighting and shading inside of Houdini works. And just then our workflow. And then we're going to come back to our rocks, and then we're going to apply some materials and start working on those materials and see how we can do some shader building because especially with these rocks it's a it's a good way to learn um because they have a quite a nice sort of procedural material so yeah let's uh let's start making something okay so if we go inside the rock you see the main rock is super simple and i kind of challenge you to maybe try this for yourself already because i mean we already covered how this was done basically with the uh when we discussed the vdbs this is basically Almost exactly the same setup. Of course, the complete rock will have some some other stuff in it, like the, uh, the 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 big rock asset. But the small rocks that we're gonna make first. I mean, have a go for yourself. Try try if you can make this work. Just just uh, just have a go. Try make something like this. Um, or you can keep watching. But um, gonna give you a quick moment to pause the video if you want. And you didn't pause, or you did. I don't know. But that's uh. Yeah, let's let's start making this asset from scratch. So let's make an empty geometry node. I guess call this rock tutorial. Let's dive in. So on top here, I made a platonic solid. So we haven't used that one yet. Uh, you could also just use a box or a sphere. But the nice thing with this uh, platonic solid, as you can see, it has this sort of weird looking shape. So this is sort of like a soccer ball kind of thing. You call this a dodecahedron. But there's a whole bunch of other things like icosahedron octahedron cube so there's just a whole bunch of stuff like there's uh, there's even an actual soccer ball there so but uh for now let's use the dodecahedron and of course you can use the wedging technique that we used earlier uh for the coral to also apply this to uh to this thing and then you could maybe like randomize like okay i want i want it to be an icosahedron in one and then dodecahedron in another and if you're if you're wondering what you would put inside of a wedge to sort of well, drive drive this this value. If you would just put this to uh, zero, one, two, three, etc., it will just go to the zero input, first input, second input, third input. So I can show you uh, how that works if you want. So let's uh, let me just make a, uh, a integer slider on the rock thing to just show that. So just integer. So if I were to have this integer slider here and just paste it on the solid type here, paste relative references. 
you can see just the slider will just uh, even though it doesn't match the name it will just put it to first input second third etc so that's how you could wedge it so uh, anyway so let's make a platonic solid let's go over there and let's also do a uh, dodecahedron on this one and let's append a remesh so what a remesh will do is it will remesh your you know, your mesh so if we have a look at it you see it makes a uh, triangular mesh from it so we don't have quads anymore but it's fine so what i ended up doing here if, oh i didn't end up using that but you but you can do is for example you have a hard edge group which you could say to uh you, you could put to keep certain edges really hard so let's say if i um let's say if i select an edge so let's say if i group this edge i could put this hard edge group to uh, let me make create an actual group and now the viewport is bugging again so it sometimes happens oh, yeah, there we go so if i select this edge yeah do it you can do it all right group so now we have a group and if i were to put this inside of my remesh now you would see that edge will remain super straight so it doesn't matter what i do with these settings like that edge will always be super straight because sometimes it will like uh, when you rematch it won't always keep these hard edges that's what you use hard edge group for if you put a star it will keep hard edges on every uh on every thing so anyway um so let's put another rematch just so you know and what just what i ended up doing was just appending a mountain so we discussed that earlier in this course just uh well before we went into vops so again, you could also just do this in VOPs and like add some noises and like make your own. Depends on what you want to do. But let's just do this. So we just have a simple sort of deformed thing. And let's do a VDB from polygons. Let's do a little bit higher resolution. So we have something to work with. So something like that. And you can see I appended a volume VOP. So very simple. I just did the whole uh, volume sample thing that I showed you earlier, and then I added some noise to the sample position. So if I want to do that, I need a VOG VDB. So let's not do a distance, let's do a VOG. There we go. Do a attribute VOG. Oh, sorry, let's do a volume VOG. Append it, go in there. And remember, we already did this when we were talking about the VDBs. We can do a volume sample. Where do we want to sample? We want to sample the current position of every voxel. We want to sample just the first input. And then we want to sample, you can also just put it to name, just put density. Right. Let's just plug it in. Nothing changes, as you can see. But we're going to change the sample position. So we're going to add a turbulent noise. the position in there let's make it a 3d noise and let's add to our sample position let's promote these parameters for some reason it's giving some error when i enabled and disabled it i have no idea why it's doing that it's weird. Let's just make a new one because that's weird. Just do a volume up. Let's just paste the whole thing in there. All right. So you can see something already happened. So then we go in there and we can com use convert VDB. Go to vdb and then change vdb type to uh no vdb class convert fog to sdf so now we have this so it really looks pretty cool so we can do another convert vdb and then we convert it to polygons 
So additionally, if you wanted to, depending on the look you're after, you could do another volume VOP. Then we could, don't really have to do a volume sample here. We could just do a, uh, just a turbulent noise. Put it in here and just use this to multiply the already existing density. So let's put it in there. We need to do this before we do the sample, by the way. So we need to do it before. Ah, we, did, we can do it here, by the way, just before we convert it. Let's up the frequency. Let's reduce the amplitude. Uh, let's have a look at why we're not really seeing much. Black noise. Let's put it to. Why am I not seeing anything? What did I do? Density. This should work. So why is it not working? Hmm, original Berlin seems to work better. Okay, let's do a dark background. Oh, okay, yeah, this seems to be the best Berlin noise. All right, yeah, so if you'd want to go for something like this, like you could you could have, it's more like, a, like I guess, like tried magma or something, uh, where there's going to be air bubbles inside of the of the rock. I didn't really use that, but you could you could definitely do that, do that just so you know. Uh, but again, if you want to, you can you can also go back to the uh, VDB. Uh, part of the course and then then we then we already did that there so i'm i'm going to remove this maybe just dis disable it so you still have it in here so i'm just going to use this and um all we need to do is just append the normal so we get some nice normals and just put an output so we could cache this to disk because this is quite heavy so you might want to uh want to cache this. So depending on how many you want to catch, you could either wedge this or just save just one out yourself. I'm just gonna just do a regular file cache and just cache one. So I'm gonna put this to dollar hip for now. You generally want to use dollar job. Let me just do dollar job. Let's call it rock. And press save to disk. So I'm gonna, oh. Then I accidentally had it put to save the frame range. I don't want to do the frame range. Already did. So there's now there's a whole frame range here, which I didn't really want to do. But uh, anyway, so let's just do one. <laughs> let's just do load from disk. So anyway, and so now we have, uh, have one of those rock pieces. And again, you could manually just make changes and then save them out like this, or you could do wedging, depending on what you want to do. So leave that up to you, how you want to handle that. I think in my final scene, I only used one, one of these bubbles uh, scattered, because if you're doing more, it's also going to be slower. And since they were like quite small and they just were used to, so add, to add detail up on the rocks, I didn't really, see much difference when I did the uh, when I did multiple and I just slowed down the render so I just using one I think with the coral it was absolutely necessary to use multiple but in this case that's really uh, didn't really matter so anyway so now we have the uh, the main rock thing so now let's uh, let's let's make the big boy the actual uh, the actual big thing that we're super close to where everything is uh, gonna be positioned on. Mm -hmm. 